Hi there, it's Top Tip Tuesday time again. Bob here from Insidium. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how we can take cached particles, but then do a custom playback of that particle data and only use some of the data that is in the cache. And that means that we have some more rendering options when we open it up in Redshift. So let's get started. In our scene, we have this emitter firing out these particles and they're all being born on top of each other. And you can see they're different colors. We're actually viewing these in square emitter mode. And that means that we're not actually looking at the particle radius. Every single particle, despite its radius, is being drawn as one of these squares. If we go to the emitter display tab, and change that from squares to circles, which does show the radius. Let's go back and redraw those. You'll see that all these particles have different radius values. And that means that when we activate this NX push modifier, which is set to particle radius mode, these will try and push each other apart. And because we have different radius values, what happens is they get pushed apart differently and it starts to form these quite cool patterns. It's difficult to see in this display mode because there's so much overlapping going on. So if we go back to our emitter display tab and go back to that mode that draws every particle the same size, uh, squares, we can just hit force display and that will update straight away. You can see that we start to get this pretty cool patterning that we've looked at in previous videos. If we hit play, we almost get this kind of fluid like motion of these larger particles pushing away and the smaller ones clustering together. Now, if we go to the emitted display tab again, you'll see that we have colored these according to the particle radius or ingredient parameter particle radius um, and we're saying that the particles are anywhere between two and six centimeters so two centimeters and below get this purple color six centimeters get the light color and anything in between gets these and that's giving us this nice variation of color so here is the issue this looks cool when all the particles are drawn at the same size but we need these particles to have different radius values to get the simulation to work. That's why the sim works, because they're all different sizes. And when we're rendering in Redshift, we're not able to select particles just to be one size. Let me demonstrate. We want to render this in Redshift, so we're going to go to our emitter, tags, render tags, and put on a Redshift object tag on the emitter. Because it's on an emitter, we've got a particles tab. And we can say for every particle, create an optimized sphere. So if I start rendering now, we're going to see those spheres. They're really big, aren't they? So what we can do is we can use this scale multiplier to reduce the size. So let's put this on, say, 0.1. So now this looks pretty good and we've got a nice look and that might be fine for you. And if so, that's fantastic. But the problem we have here is that we are um, still rendering. The lighter ones are still bigger in the render than these small ones. If we dolly much further in, let's dolly in here. We can see that. Look, these are really small and these ones are really big. And for some effects, you don't want that. You want to render all of these particles at the same size. But we are able to do this in Redshift. And here is the trick. Let's just stop rendering. What we need to do is cache this particle sim. So let's go to Insidium X Particles Cache. And we're going to build cache just on the default settings. And it's going to cache through those 200 frames. Now, once it's cached through those uh, frames, we will be able to scrub backwards and forwards. So this data is now in the cache. But here is the trick. What we can do is go to our cache object, to the playback tab, and we can select custom play. Now, this enables us to choose what particle data is going to be played back. By default, it plays back all of these channels. We are only going to play back the velocity and we want that cached color as well. So now that is playing back the velocity and the color. You'll notice that we haven't checked the radius information that has been cached. We're not going to play that back. So now that we've got this, Redshift isn't going to use the cached radius value. It's going to look to the emitter. 
So what we can do is go to the emitter, and even though this is all cached, we can go to the emission tab, and look, let's just put our radius at one, with no variation, zero. So every particle is going to have a radius of one. And this is what redshift is going to register as the particle radius. So now if we just go forward a few frames, hit render. They're a lot smaller because we've reduced the size of those. So let's go to our um, object tab again and put this scale multiplier back to say one. And you'll see on one, if we dolly in, now, every single particle is exactly the same size. These purple ones are overlapping a bit because of the push settings, but they are all identical sizes. So if we reduce that down to, say, 0.5, you'll see that we have got consistent particle radius values. So let's go into our Redshift camera here to get a more interesting position. We'll activate this plane, something like that. And now we have got the look that we want. We've got that developing push sim. It's looking really cool in our render view. And all of those particles, we've been able to give exactly the same radius size, even in Redshift, where we can't adjust that individually.